we had a good question from Brittany, who actually lives in the Cincinnati area, more south of where we are near the beautiful state of Kentucky. She asked, do you teach ground defenses such as jujitsu in your martial art dojo? Am I better off going to a MMA gym? The answer, it depends, Brittany, on what your interest in martial arts are. They're different. They specialize in different things. They're all wonderful. It's a question of do you want to do kind of a sport jujitsu where it's all grappling and, and ground defenses? Then you should definitely go to a local jujitsu gym or an MMA type of gym. If you're looking for self-defense combat, which also involves not just ground defenses, but standing up techniques, kicking, joint locks, manipulations, ukemi rolling, weapons of all different kinds, and some mind science and meditation in there, then our martial art might be for you. What I always suggest to people, and I hope those of you watching fall suit into that, you should try to ask for a free class or a free week with, with whatever dojo you do. It's almost impossible to judge a dojo off of one class. You really can't. You should stay there for a whole month or two before you really decide, is this place for me or not? Unless you're getting some weird vibe or your creep meter goes off instantly and your gut says, uh, this place isn't for me, it's like a meat market, then, then that makes sense. Look at this book here. It's called Unarmed Fighting Techniques of the Samurai. Now this is a 200 page book filled with all kinds of techniques from nine different lineages from Japan and this is what we teach here at the school. But there are about less than 10 ground fighting, ground fighting or submission from the ground techniques in it. Now this is our curriculum book which I wrote and there here on page 48 we have 30 ground flow submissions here and there are all kinds of different flows from the ground that we do. I started to learn these in about 1999 when I was doing more jujitsu. We developed this 30 flow drill. I didn't make this up, but it's how to do all of these movements from a mount escape. So let me just read you a couple here. So you go from reversing the mount to a guard escape, into a straight arm bar, kneeling arm bar, jujigatami, guillotines into loop chokes into sankaku jime into twisting the chin into a bent arm rollover into a rear naked choke into kansetsu kesagatami jump off into kesagatami go into a nightmare choke you're flipped off you do a bottom jujigatami you stack counter with an ankle pushover you do a calf pinch you do a jujigatami from the top you roll into an elevator turn you roll into a knee bar, you return, you sit into an arm bar, falling jujikatami, neck and shoulder cranks, top onikudakis. All of these things here are a flow that we can do here at the dojo. Matter of fact, we've been doing this lately. Saturday, we did the first five of the 30 in a one hour class. It is exhausting. It is so much fun to do. But many students say, yes, this is all well and good, but we're training on comfortable padded mats on the floor here with our friends who are not doing too much resistance, a little bit. It's not realistic for self-defense. And you, this is where here, comes, here come the political and the fights between martial arts come in. You can argue, yes, if you're doing things on the ground, it is not good for self-defense. It is quick and effective, but your awareness of your surroundings completely tunnel vision down to you and your opponent. Therefore, if they have helpers around, brothers or sister, sisters, they're going to come up from behind and hit you with a two by four, or there are terrible videos out there of someone trying to do a nice arm bar on somebody, but the guy, as he's getting in an arm bar, pulls a little pocket knife out and starts to stab the poor jujitsu guy who thought that the arm bar would work. There are horrible videos out there of someone trying to do a kimura or an americana and someone comes up from behind and kicks them in the face and they are knocked out or killed. These are really important issues that we address every single class with our teachers and students here. We're always skeptical, asking questions. Yes, that is a wonderful americana you are applying, but is your back exposed to the top opponent? Yes. Can you submit this guy with the Americana? Hell yes. But are you open for attack at every other angle above you? Yeah, so what do we do? Does that mean we get rid of these things or do we practice them with the realization that 
they might not be the best way to escape in self-defense. That's what we have to do here. Where does the sport and the self-defense kind of melt into the other? If you're in a controlled environment with trainers around you and a team and there's an audience and perhaps a cage or an octagon, you have referees that are there to help you and you have doctors in the corner, it's a very different type of sport martial art than if you are on blacktop trying to do ground fighting when you're on cement. I invite any of you to go out into your parking lot and do about a 10 minute round and roll of jujitsu and watch how many injuries that you sustain because you're on a hard surface. These are things I'm sure many schools discuss and talk about, but are they practice? I don't know. When we do our martial arts here, like last night where we're doing mount escapes and guard escapes and things like that, it is important. This has very few ground fighting techniques in it because it's an old book from old martial arts based in Japan that were based off battlefield warfare. If you went to the ground back then, you were killed by a knife or a spear or a horseman would come up and shoot you with a bow and arrow. You wouldn't dream of getting on the ground. It was the most antithetical thing to warfare back then and perhaps now to a point. However, in our modern curriculum, we have these beautiful flows from one to the other and there are 30 moves that we learn minimum then you can reverse them back in the early 2000s when I was much much younger doing these every single day we would take the 30 flow and we would do them backwards and then we'd have rounds where we would spar with each other and roll and fully try to submit our opponent while they resisted 100 percent you were exhausted it was hell on your body and your joints that's why a lot of guys over the age of 35 become teachers because it wrecks your body it gives you arthritis and all kinds of hip and knee injuries and back surgeries i've had two myself i've had my ankle broken my all kinds of issues with my body because we did uh, ground fighting for many many years that doesn't mean it's invalid it's a fantastic form of martial art i am so wonderfully envious of my jiu-jitsu friends who are so skilled at moving on the ground. However, several of them admit behind the doors, ah, I'm not good at my standing game. I'm a terrible kicker. I don't know uh, any joint manipulations because they're not allowed in our sport. And I have no clue how to use a knife or a firearm or God forbid you throw a, a, a broom at me, I will have no idea how to use it. It's such a comprehensive thing that you and I are studying. How do you choose? How do you pick, like Brittany, which style to do? It's my high recommendation that you go to dojos and you practice different martial arts to see which one fits. There are so many wonderful teachers and schools right in the Cincinnati area. And I will often refer someone who walks in and says, I want to do jiu-jitsu. Well, what do you mean by jiu-jitsu? Are you talking a sport martial art? Are you talking a, a sport martial art with now self-defense added in, which I'm happy to see my friends doing? It really depends. You have to spend a couple of weeks and do your homework at each school. Check their websites out. If they have a YouTube channel, check it out and see which school and teacher speaks to you. It's, it's a really kind of gray area where you have to do the work to choose the school that feels right to you. And often it's the teacher, it's the leader of the school that you will be attracted to because of the way she or he carries themselves, lives in their life. Do they uphold morals and ethics outside of the dojo or are they out every night drinking at the bar, getting into fights and hurting other people with their martial arts? These are things you have to decide. It's very, very important because this is someone you might want to follow for 10, 20, 30 years or the rest of your life. So choose your school wisely. Is it important to do ground fighting in a Koryu style of martial art, an old style? Absolutely. We should involve it. We should integrate it in as we have done in this dojo. Is it 100% of what we do? No. If you only want to do ground grappling, this is not the place for you. You should go to a jiu-jitsu dojo. All of us need to know ground defenses. It's so arrogant when I see some of my older friends that say, oh, I don't need to know that jiu-jitsu crap because uh, I'm never going to go to the ground. I'm, I'm a tough stand-up karate street fighter. You ain't going to get me to the ground. I'm like, oh, come on. A lot of fights end up on the ground, nowhere near as many as people think, but a lot do. What are you going to do when you get someone my size that's on the mount and pounding you in the face with my elbows? You better know some sort of 
movement to get out of the hair. And then you get people that come in and go, yeah, but I want to know, I want to know how to do an omoplata. Well, it's a question of semantics. An omoplata is a Portuguese name for a sankaku garami with your ashi, with a leg. It's a, if you do a failed tomoe nagi and you go into a um, ashi sankaku garame, that is an omoplata. I, I want to do an Americana. I saw that on UFC 55. I want to know an Americana. You don't do Americanas, do you? Yes, we do. It's called an onikudaki. It has an older name. It's semantically a question of knowing the history of where this stuff comes from. All modern jiu-jitsu comes from somewhere. It is not made up. However, there are exceptions where some people who roll around for eight hours a day are going to come up with cool and new and interesting ways to manipulate the body. So there are new techniques coming up, but most of them, I would say 95%, are old techniques revised and repackaged to fit the 21st century American audience or wherever you live. I want to learn an Americana. Yes, we do that. That's move number three of our 30 flow drill. It's also known as Onikudaki. Well, I want to do a Kimura. Well, a Kimura is just a shoulder hyper rotation. So that is what we call Yaku Onikudaki. It's coming from the other side. Well, I want to do an omoplata. Yes, you can do an omoplata because if you catch your leg from the side mount or you're in a closed guard and you go to the side, you can apply an omoplata. We call that ashu, ashi sankaku garami. So they all have different names. And don't be confused by the names because knowing the names is not going to save us on the street. Knowing how to do and apply the technique and when it fails, how to flow into the next is the key to self-defense. It has nothing to do with the names. If you just are interested in names, you'll be one heck of a good technique collector, but you will not be very effective when the crap hits the fan. As everyone says, everyone thinks they're cool and they're God's gift to fighting until you get punched in the nose. And then all of those theoretical things that you read about go out the window because the guy is punching you in the face and you don't have time to think. Therefore, if you haven't done your thousand hours of mat time, you are going to be at a massive disadvantage. And you better hope that you can get to your sidearm or hope that you have 50 pounds of excess muscle and weight to take control. Or you better hope that you can dodge and escape before someone my size gets you in a rakajime because I will put you to sleep in about 10 seconds. You have to train. You can't just talk about training. You can't just think about training. You actually have to get in your car or walk or ride a bike, take a train, take a bus, take a plane, and get to your local martial art dojo. Dress, get on the mat, sweat it out, bruise it out, go home, shower, eat, go back the next day and do it again, and then you do it again and again. The weeks become months. The months drift into years. All of a sudden, you're really getting efficient at something. You're getting good rank. You're getting reputation at your school. You are failing upwards. You are doing all kinds of things where you're challenging yourself mental, mentally and physically. Now you're really getting into the depth of martial arts that very few people stick around long enough to get to. Brittany. If you want to do a ground type of fighting, go to a jiu-jitsu school. You can find no better martial art there. If you want something really uh, deep and comprehensive, not that jiu-jitsu is not, I'm just saying you want something with different things that highlight your self-defense motivations and your self-defense goals, go to a different type of school. If you want to do a fantastic kicking type of sport and you want to compete, for trophies and you want to become super flexible and lose a lot of weight quickly, go to a Taekwondo school. That's what you want there. There are many things. If you want to learn how to take the opponent's balance and energy, go to an Aikido school and study that. If you want to learn how to use the Japanese sword or the bow or the chain, or you want to learn how to uh, hurt somebody quickly, come to our school. There are many, many, many choices out there. It's our job to research them, find one that fits us or our family or our children who we might want to enroll best. 
Ask your sensei, ask your teachers and your coaches if they bring politics into it, if they bring arrogance into it, and they just say, well, that guy down the street, they all suck. We're the best school around. Be careful because they're lying to you. There are good schools around every corner. There are bad schools in your town as well. There are good teachers who inspire us and who make us want to be better people, not just on the mat but off the mat. And there are teachers who on the mat are fantastic martial artists who are terrible, terrible people after the dojo closes when they go home. That's a lot of stuff for us to, to absorb and to think about. But this is what we have to do if we want to be a martial art person. Someone who studies Budo is someone who does their homework and research to find what they want in their short life. Okay? So there it is. That's something to talk about with your teachers or your friends, co-workers or people that you want to do martial arts with. I love ground stuff. It's fantastic. It is so much fun. But it wrecks your body quickly. So you have to be careful and go slow and talk to your training partners so that you don't injure each other because it can happen very, very quickly. There you go. That's an answer for Brittany. I hope it helps you, Brittany. If not, Keep researching and you'll find your answers. For everybody else, thanks for watching. We appreciate your time. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Have fun training. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.